So uh, every day I was I was with Rock Hudson and uh, d found him to be a, a, a very warm and um, gracious person. I am California of the past. I am, I am California, California of the past. I am, I am California, California of the past. Of the past. My name is uh, Calvin S. Kaplan. I uh, was born in Los Angeles. I uh, was brought up there. My family having a long relationship with the uh, movie, movie industry, they were all customers. Um, to give you an idea, for a two year period, my uncle was the head of the wardrobe at Universal Studios. The same two year period, my grandfather was the head of the wardrobe at Paramount, and my father was the head of the wardrobe at Metro Golden Mayor. So uh, as I was growing up and had opportunities even after I was uh, hired at East Bay during the uh, summers, to, I would go down and work for, the, for my father at MGM. Probably the most interesting time I spent was the whole summer as the wardrobe man for Rock Hudson on the movie Ice Station Zebra. The leading stars in there were Rock Hudson, Ernest Borgnine, and Patrick McGowan. Ernest Borgnine was actually a, a long friend of our families um, and I was actually married that summer and he came to our reception. So uh, every day I was I was with Rock Hudson and uh, d found him to be a, d a, a very warm and um, gracious person. Patrick McGowan was an excellent actor. Ernie Borgnine all that summer just kept us in stitches. He had one story after another, jokes, y you name it, and uh, just uh, the funniest person I ever. Uh, dealt with. One incident with uh, with Borgnine, we were on the set, it was six o'clock in the evening, we've been there since five that morning and the set the set had been cooled down because this movie was about the um, being in the Arctic and so <clears throat> uh, they were trying to get this last shot and so they had to move a, a, a part of a wall and so we were all sitting around waiting for the grips to come in who are the people that do the carpentry work and so Borgnine got up he said look so we've been here since five. Can we just get the shot? And, and so the assistant first director said, no, well, we have to move this wall. So Ernie said, come on. So we, he got a whole bunch of us. And, and we went over and we just ripped this, this little brace out, and moved the wall. And the next thing I knew, there were heads of unions down there, producers down there, and it, had, it caused a big uproar. Because when you're in the motion picture industry, you don't pick up a broom and sweep something because you're not in that union. Uh, one more story I'll tell you. The, 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 um, on that movie, the uh, director was John Sturgis, and John Sturgis was a very uh, autocratic dictator. Um, he scared everybody. And so my job was to make sure that whatever costumes that, the, that Rock Hudson wore were matched, because you know, in, in the movie industry, you do not shoot things in sequence. So there were a couple times when there was a, they were on a submarine, the submarine was sabotaged, and he would go running through the submarine and get water drops on himself, and so I would take pictures of it and so on and so forth uh, <clears throat> to make sure that it was matched when, when we had to do another scene again. Well, the, the script boy, the person who kept track of everything, was, was considered to be one of the best in the industry, and so we had a disagreement one time. And uh, Rock Hudson would come, and he'd always have these gloves on, this parka, and he'd, he'd be coming down a periscope scope or from, the, uh, for the, from the deck or whatever, and he would just take a glove and set it on a chart table, and the other one he'd shove it in a pocket, and I, I would write all this down. And so um, they were starting to shoot another scene, and, uh, and I said, wait a minute, stop. And you don't, do, you, you don't really do that. But, but, Sturgis says, what's the matter? I said, well, Rock Hudson has this glove in his hand, he has this glove, he puts it in his pocket, and this is what he sets on the chart table right over there. And he said, he looked at Bobby, who was the name of the script boy, he said, Bobby, is that right? Bobby says, that's not right. And it turned out Bobby didn't have notes on that particular thing. And so he looked at, and so Sturgis looked at me, and he said, I also have to tell you, I was in a doctoral program at this time. So um, he said, he looked at me and he said, are you sure that's right? And I said, well, you know, I'm in my third year of a doctoral program. And if I can remember what I have to remember from my mentor there, I think I remember that. 
Plus, I wrote it down, and here's a picture. And so Sturgis looked at me, and he said, who are you? And so I said, oh, I'm Mal Kaplan's son. Oh, Mal Kaplan's son. I said, yeah. He said, okay, Mal Kaplan's son. We're breaking for lunch. We're going to go look at the dailies from yesterday, and we'll see if you're right. I said, fine. So <laughs> they came back, and um, Bobby never talked to me again. He was, his, I guess I really embarrassed him. And they did, Sturgis just went on with the movie, and he said, Rock, you got your glove in your left hand. Put that glove on, and then, and then he went on. So that, <laughs> that, was, that was kind of an interesting situation. So uh, it was a wonderful summer um, that, that I spent, and um, I, had a, I had a very, very interesting time.